I'll say one thing, Alvin, you've got brains. <laughs> and it's the little things that count. <laughs> I was about a seven years old, and I was at my grandmother's house, and I was bored, and I went into the TV room, and I turned it on, and I was like channel surfing, OG, and um, I came upon this face, and it was really sweet. She looked like a beauty queen, and had big dimples, and I think that was the beginning of my love affair with Betty White. Why won't TV ever replace newspapers? Because you can't put it on the bottom of bird cages. <laughs> my parents uh, were um, uh, actors. My father and mother worked with Betty in 1952. She was doing her show, Life with Elizabeth. Del Moore played her husband, and their neighbors, these young kids, as they call them, the kids, came over and pitched an idea for some commercial jingles. All of them were terrible ideas. <laughs> To be able to see my parents having fun and engaging with Betty White, it was really heartfelt for me. I'm old enough that I remember watching Betty on the Mary Tyler Moore show, um, I mean in repeats. It was on like when I was three. Betty was just had the incredible um, good fortune and skill to be two, two iconic television characters. It's opportunity knocking again. <laughs> Sue Ann Nivens was this uh, on-camera, perfect homemaker character who put recipes on the news and then in real life was kind of a salty, sexy broad. <laughs> I'm not going to say one word about that cruddy wallpaper in the men's room. <laughs> I went to somebody's gift. <laughs> well, Betty was added after Valerie went on to do her own show. It was supposed to be a one-time shot, but she was so good, so great, so inventive that you couldn't not have her back on. And uh, she became everyone's delicious pixie. She represented all the little evil corners and dark places that we have inside us. And they cheered her on. What was your favorite character? Oh, that is hands down, Sue Ann Niven. Yes! Sue Ann Niven. Yes! Niven. She was so gorgeous and so hilarious and, and so naughty and mischievous. I didn't sleep a wink all night. I feel wonderful. The other iconic character that she played, Rose Nyland, playing so opposite uh, type from Sue Ann Nimitz, and so funny playing the innocent fool. You just have to learn to live each day just one day at a time. Well, of course you do, Dorothy. I mean, if you took them two at a time, you'd end up constantly changing your underwear. <laughs> the thing about uh, Rose, she was such a simple human being, but at the same time, every now and then she would hit a zinger that really took you aback, and it was some beautiful moment. And I just, I, I loved how simple life was for her in St. Olaf. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's impossible to paint Autumn in St. Olaf. How come? Maybe it's because of the horrible St. Olaf falling leaf story. <laughs> Please, Rose, if this is a story about a man named Leaf, I don't want to hear it. It's not that long. No. <laughs> it has a surprise ending. All right, Rose, just the ending, but keep it short. Splat. <laughs> My partner, Susan Harris, who created Golden Girls, loved Betty. Betty was her favorite because she was accessible, she was smart as a whip, and for Betty to play Rose Nyland was her brilliance. You did not see her act, she just became Rose Nyland. One word, Golden Girls. That's it. I just feel like the luckiest woman in the world because I got to spend five years with that woman and work and watch a master at work. We were all so grateful to be there. That was the whole atmosphere on the set of Hot in Cleveland was that feeling of gratitude. Gratitude to be working with her, but gratitude that we were laughing every day. Does anyone else smell pot? <laughs> were you a pop? <laughs> no. Then what's a two? <laughs> My favorite thing to actually watch these days are the bloopers. 
It, they just make me laugh so hard. Well, those were my favorite moments of working with Betty. Should we try the little meringue? No, the, the guys at Pie Curious were right. Once you go Blackberry. <laughs> ultimate guest star in the show because she brings so much skill to it but she's also was so lovely and pleasant to have around and such a consummate pro she comes on the show sunny and share when i saw betty i wanted to say something to her and then but i wasn't going to and then she gave me a hug and then i thought okay i can do this i'm from president carter staff i understand there's been some breakdown in communication here in the outer office I beg your pardon. What? What? <laughs> Sorry, my dear man, that I beg your pardon. Oh. <laughs> Listen here, sugar. I don't know how to say this without hurting your feelings, but you talk funny, huh? And so I said, you know, I loved you for a long time, and I used to watch Life with Elizabeth, and she went, oh, you're the one. She was so bright and so funny, and she still looked like a prom queen. I can't honestly say that the Carol Burnett show was like work. I'm sure it was to some people, but uh, Carol always called it playing in the sandbox. And Betty was definitely a fun friend to have over to play in the sandbox. Speaking of generating, are you pleased with the way I spruced up your bedroom? Oh, yes! <laughs> Putting in that toll gate was such a practical idea. <laughs> are you enjoying your new round bed? Are they comfortable to sleep on? I wouldn't know. <laughs> I just want to run upstairs and see how it looks with the drapes. Oh, oh, don't bother to show me up, dear. I'll just follow the path in the carpet. <laughs> we had had a lot of guest stars come through, but by a mile, a like ten miles, everyone wanted their picture with Betty. Go on. When I said Betty White's going to be on the show, my wife was like, oh, uh, I would like to come down and I will bring the boys. She took our Christmas card and big smile and it was great. It was just so funny and so lighthearted and she made you want to be kind of better and, and I know that sounds like such a cliche, but you really did. And I was like, oh, that's how you do it. I respect you. That's why you fail. You know, Betty did a guest spot on 30 Rock. She did it from LA and she just picked it up. So we weren't even there with her to do it. And of course, again, she just nailed it. Hey, Betty, it's TJ. Tracy, I haven't seen you since that rapping grandma movie we did. <laughs> you were so funny as the rapping grandma. I've worked with a lot of people in my career. A lot of top dogs in my career. Betty White was LeBron James of comedy. She's scoring. When we return... You just love the flirt. You're so good at it, too. It gets you in trouble sometimes. And she was lying about that. She's a good liar. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was my girlfriend. When we return to Celebrating Betty White, America's Golden Girl. <laughs>